My name is Kyle, and I'm from the uh, Developer Tools team at NVIDIA. I'm going to share a few features here that we have added to our recent uh, debugging tools to help add more support for the graphics API of Vulkan. Uh, first and foremost, our tool that we use for debugging is called Insight, and uh, specifically I'm going to talk about the Insight Visual Studio Edition, which is a plugin that integrates into Visual Studio and allows you to debug graphics APIs such as Vulkan, OpenGL, D3D, um, we also have some VR support, and also for CUDA and OpenCL. Um, so, essentially it's a tool to try and figure out what are your performance problems, what are your debugging issues, or what are your graphics rendering issues, and we give you a number of views that provide helpful feedback that you can try and use to either speed up your rendering or fix some corruption here. And um, today I'm just going to go real quick through a number of these features and kind of highlight how we've added Vulkan support to a number of these. I'm going to be highlighting Insight version 5.3, which is coming out shortly after GDC, where we have added a decent amount of Vulkan support. Previously, Vulkan support was in version 5.2, which is available right now, uh, but it, was, uh, it's been, it hasn't been updated in a few months. Specifically, we've added Vulkan support for the latest and greatest version, which is 1.0.42. We added a number of the extensions, including a number that were announced at GDC this year. Um, we've added Vulkan serialization, which is a cool feature that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, we've added shader reflection to give extra information about your shaders that are being used. Um, added a descriptor view, which is a unique view just for Vulkan. And we've also done a decent amount of bug squishing. Um, outside of Vulkan, we've also done some neat things like adding theme support, which is great because I like dark themes. Um, open VR, uh, we've added a new shaders view, and we've also added Microsoft Hybrid support and some D3D cleanup as well. So today I'm just going to walk through a bunch of the features that we have in the Vulkan graphics debugger. Uh, using the Vulkan version of Doom. Um, the main feature, one of the core views in the debugger is the events view. And this is just an API trace that dumps all the Vulkan API calls out for you to view. Um, here, one, I'm going to highlight some of the Vulkan things, but outside of Vulkan and every other language, we basically just show the event index, the description, um, and then some timing associated with it, in addition to maybe the thread or the queue that it was executed on. Um, as a Vulkan specific feature, we show command buffer construction as a comment. We, we determined that it wasn't really useful to show command buffer construction it's completely blown out, uh, and rather just show a single comment showing what was actually constructed there. Uh, additionally, we also show coherent memory updates as a comment, because those typically aren't done as API calls. And uh, what, what we typically show, as far as execution goes, is we highlight the submit calls and then the backing calls that were recorded in the command buffer associated with the submit. Um, so, for example, in this one, we're seeing a queue submit call and then a number of calls that are, um, I guess, copy buffered images that were included in the command buffer that was executed in that call. Uh, probably the second most important view is the event scrubber, which is basically a timeline view of the events. Um, and there's a number of Vulkan specific things, or more, more Vulkan highlighted things that make sense here. Uh, one major thing is the multi queue, multi threaded thing, which is um, two features that were kind of uh, the crux of why Vulkan was created, um, and we, we should highlight them in the scrubber here. And in this example, Doom is actually using two queues, one for their graphics operations on the Q1, and Q0 appears to be their compute queue, as indicated by those purple ones there. And if you were to click on those, they would highlight in the event view, and you could dig into that event and see what's actually going on there. Um, some other Vulkan-specific things here are we have support for the PKEXT debug markers, which allow you to annotate your frame, and then they show up in the scrubber, so you can quickly, at a glance, see what, what those calls are correlated with. Um, additionally, we have a cool feature called state buckets, which are essentially debug marker groups that we have created ourselves. And Vulkan, um, you're typically rendering to a render pass or a specific frame buffer or maybe a specific command buffer, and we try and highlight those things to kind of group calls together, and they, they kind of naturally flow to your algorithm. For example, maybe a one render pass is to a, um, your shadow maps, and if you were to kind of dig through that, you get a kind of similar call to try and figure out what's going on. Um, additionally, we also like to highlight synchronization. Uh, this is basically just a line that connects some of the fences and the events and the semaphores, and it's just a quick view to see kind of what are causing weights and stalls in my frame. So another major view is the current render target view, and this, this is pretty similar in all of our APIs. It's really just a what is happening right now. Here we're highlighting a draw call, and we're showing the geometry that was rendered, and we highlight it with a wireframe that's indicated red here. And uh, we show all the draw call, all the color targets, depth targets, and stencil targets. You can kind of just see 
what was the outcome of this individual draw call in isolation? Another major feature is the API inspector. And this is basically you focus in on your individual draw call and whatnot, and you can just go through and view all the current pipeline state. So you can see your, your actual pipeline information, your vendor password, frame buffer, all your input assembly, uh, shaders, reports, etc. Basically, every single piece of state that is exposed in Vulkan is visible here. Most importantly are probably the shader pages. So for example, I'm highlighting uh, a vertex shader here, and there's just a lot of extra useful information. Um, specifically, we can see the inputs and outputs, and uh, one nice feature that we added recently was shader reflection, where we can take your decorations from your sphere B and kind of correlate them to your information here, so you can actually get some idea of what is input zero. Um, we do the same exact thing for the uniforms as well, and in this case, we can see that uh, the do mention here had all these frequent Greek high vertex uniform, so the developer can probably get a better idea of what that means. Uh, additionally, we also then parse the buffer and show, um, the, infra or show the values that are associated with the buffer, and we can even use uh, sphere of the information to kind of figure out how the data is stored in there. For example, these are floating point values that we are showing. Uh, another cool feature is we were able to show GLS on information. This is done using the Sphere B cross tool, which we have integrated into our tool. Basically, um, you can just click on the one link there, and then you'll get a HLSL, sorry, a GLSL representation of your shader. And there is even work being done now to add HLSL support. So once that's done, we'll be able to show a cross-compiled HLSL version, which is pretty cool. And then as a eventual feature, we'd like to add is shader editing as well, um, which we do have an open GL right now. Basically, you can go back to this HLSL or GLSL or whatnot and edit it give your program a run again and see how it changes. Um, another important view is the geometry view. And this is basically the geometry associated with your current draw call. Here, um, I don't really know what that is to be honest, just a random draw call I picked in Doom that looked kind of interesting. But um, we give you the ability then to kind of pick what um, those vertex attributes are associated with. Uh, basically, what is the position vertex, what is the color, and the normal. And then um, we even have reflection information there too, so you can click on the drop down and try and figure out what is going on. It's useful for debugging and rendering problems. So there, there's typically issues. This is a very common source of issues in rendering. It's just your, your vertex data is not how you expected it. So this is a great way to visualize it. Um, and then another part of the geometry viewer is actually seeing that vertex information. So this is a, a view that kind of explodes it. And if you're using index buffers, we kind of lay it out in a, um, a flat layout. You also attempt to highlight any kind of NANDs or any kind of data that just looks kind of wrong. Another major feature is the resource viewer, and this is really just a high-level overview of all the um, buffers, images, uh, memory that's used in the current system, and you just have little preview thumbnails. Uh, you can also change things to display from just a list. You can kind of just go through there and get a quick at a glance, like what are all the resources involved in this application. Um, one cool thing, too, is on the bottom right, we have the available revisions, which just shows how this uh, resource changes in frame. Um, and then the bottom left, we just have expanded information specific to that resource. And uh, one cool feature I wanted to highlight is our uh, resource tagging. This is something we try and do all over the API um, via buttons that look like that. And the idea being you click these and we show back in the scrubber where that resource was used. And that's kind of neat to see like, oh, this is a, a resource. This is my shadow map. Where, where was this thing actually consumed? So you can get some additional information from this. That's kind of neat. Um, we have the same thing in some of the shader views. We have the ability to say, okay, the shader is great, but where else was it used? Um, another, well, a Vulkan-specific view here is the device memory view. So this is a, a Vulkan-only view. It doesn't obviously make sense to show this in OpenGL or whatnot. Um, basically, this is just, hey, show me all the device memory that I've allocated on the uh, far left panel here. And then once you select one of those in the middle panel, we show all the resources that you have placed in there. Um, and we sort them by their offset, provide a link, provide how their size is, and we also provide a, a quick flag that says, oh, this overlaps with something, which is usually, which can be legal, but sometimes you screwed up, so we can maybe quickly find a mistake that you made. Um, neat little feature, too, is we show this mini-map view that is just very quick. What's in this thing? Here, for example, the images are all shown as uh, using that teal color, and I guess buffers are shown using that orange color. Another Vulkan specific view is our descriptor set view. Descriptor set's obviously a unique feature for Vulkan. Um, it's a major new concept, so this is a view to manage that. On the uh, far left, we just show all the descriptors that have been created for your application. 
uh, basically all the information we can um, gain from that. Uh, one, one interesting one is the consumption counts, which is basically how many times is this descriptor bound for a draw call. So you can quickly sort by that column to figure out what are the descriptors that are actually used in the scene. Um, we also show pool information, um, which can be kind of cool just to get an idea of how many descriptors are in use, how much room you have to add more. And then obviously we show the information of the current resources that are bound to that descriptor. Um, and then once you click on one of those bound resources, you can even get at a glance information as to what that actual image or buffer or whatnot um, actually contains. A really cool feature that we're highlighting as well that was just added to Vulkan is our C++ serialization. And uh, this is a feature we've had for other graphics APIs, and uh, we just added Vulkan support for it in the upcoming version. Basically, the idea here is you have a capture, and um, all you do is you simply click uh, a button, and it exports it as a standalone C++ project that you can compile and run that frame in isolation. And this is awesome for um, there's a number of reasons. Um, regression testing, it's great. Um, since it's human-readable C++ code, you can go in and just make some little tweaks, too. Um, sometimes we've got a huge engine, it, it might take you a long time just to figure out you want to change one little variable or adjust an offset and see what happens. And this gives you the ability to do that in a matter of seconds. Uh, additionally, a, a major feature here is the ability to share this. A lot of times, um, specifically at NVIDIA, we see we have developers who just can't share their application uh, for obvious reasons, but they can share a single frame. So, for example, we might get a, hey, I'm seeing some performance issues here, some rendering corruption, I'll send you a frame, can you help me out? Um, this, this is a pretty complicated problem. There are a number of issues that we had to address in order to do this. Um, for example, in OpenGL, it's, it's a little bit simpler because um, in OpenGL you can kind of just do a dump of the frame and things just work, whereas in Vulkan there were a number of unique issues we needed to handle. Uh, specifically, one of them was portability. A lot of Vulkan is done off of indices, where basically you have a, you, you ask for a property or a collection of properties, and then the API returns an index, and then you use that index. However, that index might not make sense if you want to run your serialization on one device or another device, or even in between different driver versions. There's no guarantees that those numbers may stay the same. Uh, another issue that's interesting is, um, since we're looping a frame in isolation, you, you occasionally need to reset some of that data in order for things to make sense. This is commonly seen in uh, particle simulations. Uh, like in this example right here, this is a, a simple particle simulation demo. And if you don't reset your frame, those particles, despite being an isolated paused capture, those particles are still moving. So that you need to address that by resetting those to their original state each frame. Uh, some other things we needed to address was the acquire render present flow. Uh, that's a specific Vulkan issue with the acquired um, swap chain image. You render that swap chain image and then you present that. In a isolation, if you just simply replay the same frame over and over and over again, you're, you're going to have issues there because you're uh, acquiring something, rendering to a fixed thing that you captured, and then presenting to that fixed thing. So we address that by essentially patching them up and respecting the most recently acquired image. Um, other issues we had to solve were multi-threading, synchronization, multi-buffering, a lot of barriers. And we also obviously don't want to inject unnecessary um, queue weights because that'll kill performance. And like I said, this is a new feature we just added for the Vulkan, but it is available for other APIs. Um, as far as extensions go, we, we support the majority of them, including a number of ones that I highlighted here that were just added um, just a couple days ago. Um, there, there's, we, we support the most of the Vulkan core, we have some work to do with um, sparse textures, but other than that, we, we do have really good coverage, and we just plan to add more as new extensions are added. Uh, what else is on our roadmap? We want to add profile and performer performance analysis. This is something we have for our, all of our other graphics APIs, and Vulkan is next on the list. This is basically just low-level information that is unique to the um, NVIDIA hardware. Just why is my draw call slow? Give me some extra information about uh, utilization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also want to add Android and Linux support. Um, this is something we're working on soon. Like I mentioned earlier, shader editing is something we want to add. Uh, sparse texture support isn't 100% there, and that's something we need to clean up. And also, um, we've been trying to brainstorm some ideas on how to better visualize resource barriers. This is a Vulcan unique problem, and we're, we've been just trying to see what issues people are running into and how, how we can visualize them. So we, we want to do something there eventually. And then obviously, we'll support future extensions and any uh, other core releases that do come out. So I just wanted to highlight something else here. Um, I mentioned that there are a few things that aren't in Vulkan yet, but they are in our other APIs. Uh, one of them being the linked programs, you know, which is available on OpenGL right now. 
And basically, this is just a, a view that shows all of the programs and shaders that you have used in your um, application. And the cool thing here is we also have a bunch of performance information uh, related to the number of registers, the local memory used, uh, the uh, cycle estimate, and uh, the number of instruction counts used. And that's just a quick at a glance view of all the things that are, all, all the shaders and programs that are being used in your application. Additionally, we want to add the profiler, which is not in Vulkan yet, but it is in OpenGL. And this is basically the low-level performance numbers that are, are collected on the NVIDIA hardware that we want to display. So you can really deep dive into your program to figure out, okay, this draw call is taking a long time, but what's what's actually going on here? Um, and uh, the unique thing here is we call this our range profiler, which um, we, we've found that a lot of applications these days have tens of thousands of draw calls, and just Profiling an individual draw call in isolation really isn't too useful. You, you might be like, why is my shadow pass slow? Or why is my um, crazy algorithm I'm doing here actually slow? Like, what is it doing on the GPU? I don't care about one draw call, I care about that entire algorithm. So we, we've come up with this range profiler idea where you can select an entire range, uh, being one of the perf markers that you've added or even one of the um, state buckets that I described earlier. You can kind of click on them and just get a high level overview what's going on there. And then you, you can deep dive into the individual draw calls to see like maybe which one is the individual uh, troublemaker there. And at the end, there's just tons of information here. It's just uh, lots of low-level performance numbers, memory information, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, like I said, this is Nsight, the Visual Studio Edition specifically. We are um, over at the NVIDIA booth on the other side of the convention center where we're showing off um, VR debugging, uh, the division for D312, and then we're showing off Doom for Vulcan and uh, the semi.